it's all right and the lo- hey tv talk <laughs> fans seeing a little behind the scenes you know i'm singing a tune uh collider tv talk is back on your friday i'm here with the one the only thad williams what's up buddy hey man how you doing i'm feeling pretty good good week of tv yeah um, lots of television i i gotta tell you man before we get into it i know that that you may have bailed after the first episode, but I really like Mayans. Oh MC. no! I caught up last night. Okay, I caught up last night because you said you were on board. Yeah, and uh, I'm loving it. Right? I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think I tweeted last night, or maybe I don't know if I did, or maybe I told a man. I said Mayans MC is the show I didn't think I wanted, but now I need. Yeah, it's really entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my my wife came home last night uh, as the sex montage was happening at the end of the most <laughs> recent episode. Yeah. She's like, "What are you watching?" I'm like, and ah, we knew it's, that it's a, was coming. It's a motorcycle show. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> about it uh yeah i'm really enjoying it a yep, lot yep. I, I it's it's uh fx never never fx job. never fails to disappoint and uh this season of always sunny has been absolutely bonkers and oh just yeah I had the range rover episode have you seen it i was that last night yeah. i haven't watched last night's yet i slept yeah. in this morning so i didn't didn't catch it but uh, uh, you'll know the scene yeah. i'm talking about when uh with dennis it's i do just, love dennis and his range rover mm-hmm. i mean that thing has seen some seen some stuff just wait for this episode all right all right let's get into it um breaking news from new york comic-con on Dateline, Matt Bomer cast as Negative Man in DC Universe's Doom Patrol. This show is quickly becoming like the dream team of talent they, all of a sudden. They found everybody for this show. So let me just run run through. First, you got you got Brendan Fraser. Okay. Now you have Matt awesome. Bomer. Uh, Diane Guerrero from Orange is the New Black, mm-hmm. who I love. Uh, April Balby, who uh, name doesn't ring a bell, but I'm yeah. sure I recognize her. And then, lest we forget, Timothy frickin' Dalton. I know. I, 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 it's an, it's unbelievable the amount of talent that they're bringing for a show on a unproven brand new streaming, streaming service. Yep. Uh, I know Frazier and Bomer's characters, they're both doing voices. They're doing the voices of the characters and then they're playing the, is it like motion cap? Well, no, they have other actors playing them in suits. Got it. But they're going to play themselves in the flashbacks, like before they became these people. Mm-hmm. And these these uh, the these superhero characters, and then uh, they're gonna voice the characters in the suits. Okay. So, because someone was tweeting me a photo of Brendan Fraser Fraser's character, and you know it's like all makeup and stuff, and I'm like, they're like, oh, that's how the only way only way you cast Brendan Fraser is you cover him up. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's been on television a lot lately. <laughs> yeah. He did that. He did that trust show on Condor. FX. He did Condor. Uh, there was another project he was in recently, and I'm right. blanking on it. Uh, Me too. Encino Man Two, maybe. Yeah, Encino Man Two. And uh, and so Back. this time it's in Balboa. <laughs> hey, <laughs> from one side of the valley to the other, and uh, they yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna be very heavily featured in the in the show, and we are gonna see their faces in all the flashback sequences, right. which I assume they're gonna intercut. Uh, throughout the series, I got to so. tell you, like the Titans thing, it, I don't know anything about it. I didn't really get me super excited, but yeah, uh, and I've heard mixed reviews. Uh, mixed so, is a good way to put it. Mixed, uh, but for some reason, I, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about this Doom Patrol. Because here's the thing: once you start getting away from the main superheroes, yeah, and you start going these deep dives of things where only comic book fans really know who they are, or because the casual fan does not, right. like myself, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I can't tell you that I would get excited for anything like Black Lightning. I was like, it sounds awesome. I watched the first six episodes, just like every CD, CW superhero show. Sure. I just watched a trailer for the new season of Flash, and the one line Barry Allen says is like, "What's my future like?" I'm like, dude, you've been asking that question since first episode. <laughs> but what, first th- what's season. his past like? And then what's his present? And what's his alternate future going to be like? Correct. There's so right. many questions. Exactly. And how many speedsters does he have to fight this season? Uh, but this Doom Patrol kind of sounds a little bit like. Um, uh, like something that that may get my attention, uh, simply based off the casting. If some guy like Matt Bomer or or Timothy Dalton is might might sign on for this, yeah. and Brendan Fraser, yeah, unless they're throwing them just a mountain of money and it's trash. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely possible, but I th- I think the advantage of this also I completely forgot Alan Tudyk is the villain. Yeah, at least in season one, he's playing Mister Nobody. Uh, so That's I think my whole life. Hey, uh, so I think I think uh, I think this is. They have a little bit more room to play, yeah. Uh, and so they the, apparently this is the 55th anniversary of the of their first appearance in DC Comics. Okay, your dad probably read probably. Doom Patrol at one point. I'm guessing, uh, but yeah. So he's gonna. I, I I like the kind of misfit group, the group like the the band of misfit toys that has to work together, right. and I'm sure they're gonna solve crime in some fashion. <laughs> I don't know, or save the save the planet, or do whatever. I imagine they're gonna patrol the Doom. <laughs> 
Uh, so they're going to – I mean, I, I think it's cool. Uh, hey, uh, what do you guys do? Uh, we uh, patrol the Doom. Yeah. It's uh, kind of a thing. They just walk around the game Doom <laughs> in, in circles. The whole thing is going to be first-person shooter. Just with that baton, just walking the yeah. beat. Just yeah. walking the beat. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's move on to something uh, that's not that funny. Um, but yeah. uh, l- listen, <laughs> CBS is in some turmoil here. They, huh? I mean, I can't tell. So, all right, quick, quick. <laughs> Moonves? Yeah, yeah. I can't tell. This is uh, for 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 you guys that have been asking for this on Twitter. This is uh, this is Thad giving you the business, right? Uh, so, ding 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 ding. Thad giving you the business. Giving you the business. Ding, ding, you the ding, business. Ding. And so, looking at some uh, some some not so fun <laughs> stories in the CBS world, they just had to fire or put on leave through an investigation. Uh, their VP of late night programming on the East Coast, okay. which as Colbert put last night on his show, he's like, there's only one show on late night in the East Coast, and it's us. Yeah. So he's basically our Veep. Uh, so he has had a long history of accusations. Mm-hmm. Colbert detailed them a little bit last night, said that staffers came forward about six months after the show started, and they had an internal investigation Nothing happened. Colbert kind of had the feeling that someone was protecting him. Okay. Uh, so he, Colbert really followed through on this. He talked. He 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 spoke about it last night. He thanked CNN for running this report. They spoke to I think nine people. Whoa. Who came forward uh, anonymously because they were f- afraid of their jobs. Mm-hmm. This person was uh, this 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 uh, network executive was saying horrible stuff in the office, treating people poorly, uh, lots of lots of uh, sexual harassment language. and But then on top of that... The homo stuff, too. Well, and r- retribution towards, like, tw- uh, the, the, there were allegations that he was, uh, that he was canning people when they spoke up about right. it. Right. Which is, you know, the big, big no-no. <laughs> right. Uh, it's bad enough to be saying all this stuff, but then to also, like, follow through. And, and, yeah. and, and then you've got that. You've got Moonvez. There's a big story in Variety, I think, this early this week about the director of photography on the Criminal Minds, oh, who okay. had been assaulting his uh, his camera team <laughs> and firing. Who are these people? Firing people when they spoke up about it, and like, I mean, just awful stuff. And I can't tell if, you know, the Charlie Rose Les Moonves thing kind of snowballed a lot of investigations, and a lot of a lot of people are coming forward now because right. they feel like they finally can. Or if it like if this problem this problem can't be unique to CBS. Right. It's just that it, all of the all of the stories that are dropping are currently at CBS. I'm sure Fox Fox or, News went through a whole thing of it last year after Bill O'Reilly. The, I'm sure NBC has some stuff. ABC, any of these big companies. God, I mean, it's bound. But to here's the thing too: is maybe it, with Les Moonves at the head or something like that, there was maybe a harboring of the behavior. Oh well, th- that's that, definitely possible. That was like ah, uh, he's just it's yeah, it, look, it's just Favali. It's Vinny Favali. He does it, yeah. He was on Stern. He touches butts and uh, says you know, inappropriate. It's his thing. It's, it's what he does. It's Vinny. It's but, Vinny F. <laughs> here's the thing: is that and it's it's same thing goes for comedy, stand-up comedy, scripted comedy. If the joke is meant in jest, yeah, it's funny. If it's good, it's funny. You say it kind of whatever. If it's meant in a term that's derogatory or offensive yeah. or makes somebody feel very uncomfortable, then it's not in jest. It comes from a place of truth, and it's right. weird. Right. And I think that's what he – that he had just kept going and going and going to the point where he made everybody in the room feel uncomfortable, and it was only a matter of time before somebody said, hey, Vinny, that's it, man. Yeah. What are you doing? And you can't just – if somebody doesn't like your humor, fire them. No. Or call you out and be like, hey, man, it's inappropriate. Maybe you shouldn't do that. You're like, hey, you don't have a job anymore. That's also illegal. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. It's <laughs> – Yeah. I mean how do you – there's no way you can defend this this kind of behavior. His, his defense was I work in comedy. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's uh, nothing I hate more. You probably hate this even more than me. Yeah. But like when people hide behind comedy as yes. a way to inflict pain on others, yeah. it's like there's there's one thing to make jokes. And there's one thing to – you can make derogatory jokes. You can make jokes towards people. Yes. But if you start directing them at specific people, especially people that you work with, right. then it becomes something completely different. It's and, like, and then just saying like, oh, it was a, it, this is humor. I work in the humor business <laughs> and you know, like you're not the comedian. You're no, the network executive. That nobody likes. Like you can't – you like you can't walk around talking like Howard Stern in the office. Right. 
Howard Stern does that on the air because that's his shtick. That's his joke. And that's part of his humor. And it's not and it's and it, it's in the moment of the show. And he's right. the comedian. and He's allowed to do that because that's it's not what by the water is. cooler. And he's grabbing your yeah. ass and telling you like, hey, tits yeah. look great in that shirt. Like, hey, man. We don't do that no. here. You don't call people homos. Yeah. You don't say you get – like the word erection in general should not be in your mouth outside of a fifth grade guidance class, <laughs> like a health class. Be like, you yeah. boys are going to get erections and that's going to happen. Yeah. Great. You don't say you have an erection around Jennifer Hudson four times. First of all, that's impossible. I, I, Second yeah, of that, all – the, the, the science does not add up on that. No. One. But yeah, no, you cannot – you cannot – It's kind of uh, like, hey, my grandma's – this kind of stuff in the office. No. If my grandma's old. She's a racist. That's not Okay. Just because she's old doesn't it doesn't make it okay that she's a racist. I'm so it, sorry to hear that. <laughs> Is your grandma really a racist? No, my oh, grandma's oh, amazing. Oh, you're just you're, this was a hypothetical. Yes. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah. you know my grandma. She's old. She's a racist. No, that's not okay. That's not okay. You got to tell your grandma, hey, that's not okay. We don't do that. It's not like when Uncle Leo robbed the Brentano's books in Seinfeld. Okay, <laughs> he's old. He was robbing things. That got, got his what funny, about what about what, what about uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 grandfather, the Nazi grandfather, in Always Sunny? <laughs> Is that was because that was mine for humor and like old people. No, but always sunny different. is That's on totally a, different. Always totally sunny different. is on an island. Yes, yes, they are because they, can, they know what they're doing is offensive. Yeah, and then they try to do that on network television, and it never works. No, because it's not funny. No, like there's a like there's a there's a place for crass humor. There's yes. a place for bottom bottom feeding people. Yeah, and it does like there's something that doesn't translate. That's why the cool kids. Is getting because they're like trying to do oh because it's from Charlie yeah and 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 uh, and Mac and them yeah they uh, they they're trying to do that kind of that kind of humor and it's does not it, translate it has to go somewhere else yeah and yeah. and and point <laughs> moral of the story here is if you are not the comedian on the program that you work for you're not allowed to say the jokes right like you you can't walk around reciting it's the Michael Scott rule yeah. Yes. You don't recite you don't. Exactly. Chris Rocks. No. Because you yourself are not allowed to do that because you're not on stage as a comedian. Yeah. 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 If there's not a stage and a mic and a curtain in your in where you work, mm -hmm. then you aren't the comic. Like you, there's just you're just not there. Correct. And don't don't pretend that you can that you're that person. But yeah, I mean Colbert didn't say it outright, but he did kind of hint that now that Les is gone, maybe that that's a, that 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 person from above Cut that was kind of helping foster because the timing is, is a little it's, bit suspect. Yeah. I mean, you foster the behavior and this yeah. is what we get. Yeah. My internet. Foster just, the people, by the way. Great, great band. band. Great band. <laughs> really good stuff. Uh, they, they, they finally put out a new record after a long time. Uh, <laughs> speaking of late night, yeah. little, uh, did anyone watch S SNL this past oh, I week? I did. I, okay. I got to tell you, man. Yeah. That opening sketch with Matt Damon might have been the funniest I've laughed at an SNL sketch mm -hmm. in Ever. It's been a while, right. and it was pitch perfect. Yes, they uh, his 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 impersonation was perfect. Yep, they took a lot of the language straight from the transcripts, and it worked really well. <laughs> I love when they do that in the political humor sketches, where they just they're just repeating the same thing. They're just amping the half comedy of it is up joke, a little bit. Half half of it is joke, half of it's reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And 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 then the cast of characters that kept coming out as all the senators mm -hmm. and the, and Aidy Bryant as the prosecutor. Who was constantly getting getting? Uh, that's getting, your time. Yeah, and yeah, you don't have to call me the female prosecutor. You can just call me the prosecutor. There's no other prosecutors half in the room at the moment. Really uh, good. Yeah, it was very funny. Uh, are you more of a Perrier bottle or a Fiji bottle? That's my big question. Like, what are we? We're, if we're doing couples costumes, I'm Halloween, more of a Poland Spring man okay, myself. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, I like the osmosis water cooler that we have <laughs> for sure. Uh, for but sure. You, you know, I Kanye Kanye was a little bit. Kanye. Yeah. Uh, we, we found out before the premiere, Lauren Michaels was doing an interview, said that Ariana Grande was supposed to be the opening guest because she's now engaged to Pete Davidson, yeah. who we're seeing a lot of in the pilot. In the it was premiere. very funny. The, the the Pete Davidson film piece was yes, hilarious. It was. It was really good. Uh, also, I really loved the film piece. With the college, Kyle Mooney? The college campus one. Oh, yeah. That was good. That was really yeah, that funny. Was good. Yeah. That was good. Um, but yeah, so Kanye stepped in when Ariana did not want to do it anymore. Of course he did. Uh, and Kanye, who he stepped in and he stepped in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was well, cause just... I watched the, the Keenan thing on Seth Meyers like, yeah. the two nights later saying that Kanye West basically like wrangled and then held hostage yeah. the cast and even Adam driver. Right. And went on a Trump, uh, rally basically. Yeah. And listen, 
politics aside, I don't care. I don't care what you are, whatever. But you can't do that to people. Yeah, it was. It, You're I, not. You didn't sign on for a political for rally. I felt bad for them because they could. You could tell in the because Chris Rock was posting the Insta stories because it was after they went off the air. Oh yeah. And uh, so Chris Rock was posting them on Instagram. I'm sure they're available somewhere if you want to go watch them. Uh, <laughs> someone probably downloaded them and reposted. But sure. you can see all of them, all the cast members that were that made it back up on stage were just kind of like, oh god, I Get can't me move out of here. I, 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 I feel like there were some new cast members up there. They're like, I don't know what this is. This what is this what happens every week? Like, do I have to stand here? It's Kanye West. Like, can we say no like, to him? Yeah, yeah. We can't. Be, we, we're not allowed to boo him. We're not allowed to walk off. I, I just. I feel like I don't want to be in the picture when someone inevitably takes a photo of him doing this. I don't want to be in the background. Uh, but yeah, all that aside, the episode was pretty funny. I yeah. thought there, there was, was some a, good, eh. there was some good bits. There was, I, I, I wanted like the more Vermont, line. I, the white supremacist that Vermont. That was really thing. good. That was very funny. That was a very, it was a very funny, uh, like I, I can imagine the writer's room session where they're like, where's yeah. the other place that they could go? <laughs> oh, Vermont. Vermont. Uh, but I wanted more live sketches. That's always my, that's always my gripe. Yeah. Um, especially when they ended the third, like they ended, they ended the show early. And I saw like they did the Vermont sketch and then they cut back to the band for like a 20 second musical interlude, mm -hmm. like in the commercial. And I immediately I said out loud, I was like, oh, they're short. They're short on time. Right. Cause, or they're long, rather, because they don't cut back to the band at the end of the night unless they need to fill a little bit. Right. And then they came back and Adam Driver in the Good Nights set uh brought Kanye back up to stage to perform a third song. Right. So I was like, this is really weird. Like why uh, I guess is okay, he's Kanye. Let him do three songs. But like it's the season premiere. You want to you want to see as much comedy, comedy. as possible. Because yeah. you know they've been mining it all summer. Yeah. And so I was kind of hoping for one more live sketch. Yeah. Uh I'm really excited Aquafina's hosting this week. Yeah, I like uh, she was great in Crazy Rich Asians. She's hilarious yeah. and I'm uh excited to see what she brings to the show. I'm hoping that she raps week. a little bit. I I would imagine she would. Right? Uh Travis Scott is the musical guest. Okay. Uh and then the f then next week is Seth Meyers with Paul Simon showing oh, up. Oh, nice. Uh, cuz he just did his farewell tour. Yeah. I think this I think they said this is his 15th time on the show. Well, over under Chevy um, Chase showing up to do Call Me Out. Something tell uh, after after all of Chevy's stuff. I don't think Chevy's showing up, but maybe Chevy and Kanye can do like a tour uh, together. Yes, like a like a we want to we we've we, offended people. We tour? want to ruin SNL from the inside yeah. tour. Okay, uh, but yeah, so I, like that. I don't know. All I right. love SNL. I'm, I, I, I know I I do too. I'm a huge SNL apologist. I mean, I I like to watch every every season. Yeah. I hate the whole like oh it's not as good as it used to be crap because I totally agree with Lauren. It, everyone's favorite season is when they were in high school. Right. And or if you That's were, a Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> uh, and if you if you watch the show regularly, you will always find something that yes. you like. Yeah. Uh, but the humor changes over time and, 100%. and every every show and every cast is a little bit different. I still find it funny. Yeah. Uh, let's do this briefly. Star Wars gets its title synopsis. Why don't you head on over to Jedi Council? Yeah. Here's our here's our uh, here's our prop. <laughs> here's our promo. Plug. For Jedi Just Council, lob it over there. Yep. They're uh, going to talk about it. That's great. It's friend a, of the show, Emma Fife, is yes. on the desk. Yes. for Jedi Council this week, so she's going to be talking about it with Christian and Ken. Throw it up there. Uh, I've never watched an episode of any Star Wars television shows. Uh, mostly well, this because, is the first live action show they've ever done. I've heard. I and, know this. And, yeah, and it's so, John Favreau. So it's. I mean, maybe I'll check out the first episode if rumor, I like it. I think there's rumors that Pedro Pascal might be the lead. Uh -huh. He might be the, the Mandalorian. <laughs> okay, that they're speaking of in the in the synopsis. I okay. don't know. Uh, I just there's so much Star Wars out there right now, and uh, I haven't been able to keep up with any of it. So that's fair. Uh, I, I don't want to be the one to step on this and, and then get the wrath of the Star Wars community after me because I still stand so by my tweet of what's wrong with the Last Jedi. So I shouldn't. Uh, so I shouldn't title this episode. Josh hates Star Wars. <laughs> Josh hates Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. Josh lives for the prequels. His favorite thing is Attack of the Clones or the Clone Wars or whatever they're freaking called. I don't it was the attack. You were right the first was time. Was I? Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, right. cool, cool, cool. So moving on, <laughs> getting getting Josh away from the Star Wars world. Yes. Uh, well, let's talk about The Last Jedi. Um, so, oh, wait. No. Away no, 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 from no. the Star Wars. Away from the Star Wars. Got it, got yeah, it, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My bad, my yeah. bad. So, uh, so on Canto Bite. <laughs> So Canto Bight is basically the Borgata Casino in Las Ve in Atlantic City, mm. right? That makes sense. And and uh, I was thinking more like Abu Dhabi kind of thing. Oh, so oh, like a Dubai casino, like a Dubai thing, ah, like where you've got like or the, Macau. Yeah, yeah, you got like mm. a centralized 
uh, wealth center and then and then surrounded yes. by a lot of poverty. Yes, got it, got it. So like Biff's in Back to the Future yes, 2. Yes, just like Biff's. Okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. perfect, mm-hmm. perfect. Okay, uh, Hoops at Netflix. Now, I know that you are not personally a fan of all the adult animation uh, I just Netflix. don't have the time to watch yeah. them all. And I, I've seen bits and pieces of a lot of them, and I love them all. Yeah. They're really, there's some really funny stuff out there. Paradise PD really got me. You did? Yeah, it's yeah. funny. Uh, and I've heard F is for Family is hilarious. I see Vince Vaughn is joining the cast for that. BoJack Horseman uh, yeah. is one of the most genius shows on TV, 100%. Yeah. Um, Hoops with Jake Johnson now is like an adult. He It's a, a basically a... Um, Bad News Bears kind of situation with a high school basketball team oh. that, he, that the head coach thinks if he brings his high school basketball team out of the doldrums, he'll get recognized by the big leagues or something like that. So it's going to be wrong. It's going to be off. But another awesome announcement is that Vince Vaughn is joining F is for Family, Bill Burr's Netflix comedy series, yes. which is by far my favorite animated series of all time. Wow. F is for Family is unbelievable. It is so smart. It's so funny. It's, it's, I love Bill it's Burr. heartwarming. And Bill Burr, he's great. He plays the dad. Uh, all the jokes are very irreverent, very Bill Burrish. It takes place in the 70s, early 80s kind of a situation. It's okay, just, okay. Is it kind of like based on his life as a kid yes, kind of thing? Correct, correct. So he's so he's voicing his father in he's a certain sense? He's voicing his father. Oh, yep. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm liking everything I'm hearing about this. Yes. And who is Vince Vaughn going to play? Do Vince Vaughn plays his dad's friend who's a military pilot. And his dad okay. works for an airline. Okay. And the clip that they showed is him... Put, taking him up in like an F-16 and making him puke all through it and he scream. It's very, very <laughs> funny. But it's easy. I think the first two seasons are six episodes a piece or maybe eight and they're half an hour so it's an easy binge. That's, that's, that's easy to do. And it's uh, it always takes place around Christmas time. It's like always takes uh, place. I think they're releasing it December 19th. Okay, and, it's, and the setting is also like family Usually at Christmas around, time? Correct, yeah. Uh, or like in the winter because it's in outside Boston so there's always like a somewhat of a snow on the ground and you know your, your kids are always getting in trouble in in the wintertime in northeastern cities because uh, yeah. we had nothing to do. Oh, yeah. And it was cold, and your parents didn't want us in the house after school, so we just, like, walked around with our buddies and got in trouble. Oh, yeah. I, I, we had a blizzard uh, when I was in fourth or fifth grade. The blizzard in 93? Yeah. And uh, and we were out of school for, like, three weeks. Oh, it was amazing. Because Virginia doesn't know how to handle snow. Mm-mm. And uh, and the highlight of that tour for me was uh, pelleting – or. Snowballing, snow, having a snowball fight with my brother, but just like hitting him at close range with an ice ball <laughs> and cracking his skull open and having to go to the emergency room yeah. and give him like nine stitches. And my mom, we didn't have a car. We only had one car at the time. My yeah. dad was at work. So we had to get the, the ambulance had to drive in the snow to come pick us up. And then we went to the hospital and I, my yeah. brother did a similar thing. Yeah. He meant to hit me with a snowball and winged this girl that lived in our neighborhood oh, as no. we were getting on the bus and he got in a ton of trouble. Oh yeah, yeah. It wasn't the best. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? But I can't recommend F is for Family. I'm looking forward to Hoops uh, on Netflix because I love Jake Johnson. Uh, I miss him on TV because he, New Girl was, he was one of my great favorites. On New Girl, yeah, yeah. And Let's Be Cops. I will stand by to the day I die. Is it's a great not movie. Inter- it's not that bad. It's entertaining. Tell you what, it is an entertaining movie. Yes. I like Jake Johnson and Damon Wayans Jr. running around. I haven't watched Damon Wayans Jr.'s new show yet. I haven't either. His sitcom with. Um, with the the wife oh. from the Carmichael show. Yes. And it's it's like a couple a fiance, a couple, and then they're they live they're with like, a rock star. Yeah, like their famous pop star friend like moves in with them. Because he's their manager or something. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. They're, her, his she's manager. his manager and then something like that. Yeah, he needs a place to stay, so he becomes the third wheel in yes. their in their house. It's a funny idea for a show I haven't watched it. It's a it's a it's a good idea. I do I like Damon Wayne's Jr. too. It's great. And one of the most a short lived show that I loved. Uh, was oh, what was the name of that show on ABC? With Happy him? endings. Happy endings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why that he show. left. That's why he left. Uh, New girl. New girl. Because he he, he was that, in the pilot. Of he New did girl. the pilot of New Girl, but Happy Endings was in first position. Then and they then bring they, in Lemoyne Morris. Correct. Uh, and yeah, Lemoyne's hilarious. Yeah. But they made the great decision to even though even though Happy Endings was in first position, they didn't reshoot the pilot. Yeah. And they wrote him out in the second episode, without killing him off or anything. No. And then. When he was able to at the end of Happy Endings, he came back on the show. It was brilliant. It really like was. I very rarely do they do that. Like normally, normally when they recast, they would have just reshot the whole pilot. Right. But for whatever reason, they decided not to. They thought they. I remember them saying that. That's why I like New Girl. It was it was a smart decision. Yeah. It was a smart decision. Speaking of Damon Wayans Jr. Yeah. Let's jump ahead and talk okay. about Damon Wayans Senior. That's a hell of a transition there. Uh, you know, remember <laughs> we've been talking about Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon had some problems. <laughs> 
they had some problems with some casting. Damon yep. Williams was not happy with his co-star. No. Nope. Uh, Clint Crawford got fired. Now Sean William Scott came in, and it's now no relation to John McClane. No, none. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Sean William Scott, it's now Lethal Weapon, so you've got, uh, uh, instead of Riggs and Murtaugh... Lethal Weapon 2, colon, Stifler. Stifler, yeah. exactly. And so it's doing really well in the ratings. Yeah. Uh, they only picked up 13 episodes for this season because they didn't know if it was going to work, mm -hmm. and it is, so they want to do more. But this week, Damon Wayans shot an interview on set and said that he's done with the show. Yeah. He's quitting. Well, after all of this, after getting his co-star fired and pushing to get the season renewed, he's now like, I'm done. It's kind of like you just kicked the drummer out of the band, yeah. right? And then you're and like, we shouldn't go on tour. We release an album, and nobody likes it, so I'm quitting the band. Yeah, I, mean, I should, uh, you know, on second thought, we should just, we should, we so should just end this. Apparently, what they're gonna do, yeah, um, as told to me by BogusFacts.biz. Oh, I'm a big fan of that site. It's a huge site. Yeah, big on Facebook. Uh, Sean William Scott is gonna go out the 13 seasons with Damon Wayans. 13 seasons? 13 episodes. Wow. I, apologize. I didn't yeah. 13 realize seasons. they picked it up for 13 seasons. 2031. Yeah. It's gonna be done. I like it. Um, that was quick math. On I was my just part. gonna double check your math facts because I, I couldn't do that in my head. I'm I impressed. just winged that. I'm I was like, impressed. 2031. Hey, well um, done. So they're gonna keep Sean William Scott. Yeah. And then Dame, they're gonna kill off Damon Williams. I mean, he's gonna retire. He's getting too old for this shit, and he's gonna walk off in the sunset. Yeah, yeah. And I've, then, heard, I've heard that somewhere. And then over the hill, a hot day in L.A. You know that that heat coming off the street. Yeah, he likes to party. She likes to get down. Here comes Damon Wayans Jr. Takes off his sunglasses. He joins Sean William Scott because he's not getting too old for this shit. Because his show's probably gonna get canceled. Yeah, exactly. And same thing as New Girl. Yeah, he comes in to lead the weapon. Comes on in to lead the weapon. I yep. like that pitch. I think that probably has already been pitched. I've never in watched an Fox. episode, but I have a good feeling yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I read this more. I read this morning a report that they. Uh, this is, we're recording this on Thursday. Yes. Uh, and as of Thursday morning, the producers are trying to like coax him out of quitting the show because uh -huh. they're like, maybe he was just like, well, what are they going to do? Like the Chevy Chase thing where they make him sit down the whole season because he didn't want to stand up and act anymore. <laughs> so they break his two legs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I'm curious to see how this all unfolds. Uh -huh. uh, this show is just like, it's a moneymaker for Fox. Yeah. They want the show to continue, but they just keep like, Every time they turn around, it's just a <laughs> bit more of a mess. I Next thing you know, they're like, what if we just bring Mel Gibson in? <laughs> I'm just going to uh, say, wait, I just thought, it's basically an anthology series where each season a new cop replaces an old cop. <laughs> and then it basically just becomes like true detective weapon, basically. And then like all of a sudden you just get this Mel Gibson cameo. Danny Glover's like a new chief. You're like, what is happening? Rene Russo comes out of nowhere. Joe Pesci's like, eh. <laughs> I like everything that I'm hearing. Right? I'm buying this show. When does Chris Rock come in and complain about cell phones? Totally. Um, yeah. I mean, what are those guys doing? Speaking of cell phones, I yeah. need to. My con, my contractor's calling me. I need oh, to call go ahead. Back Do you want me to quick. just carry the show from uh, here on now? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We can pause. I'll I'll edit this. Okay. Out. And we're back here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick edit. Thad had to take a phone call. He's a big friggin' deal. Yeah. Uh, but that was actually Damon Wayans Sr. Oh. He was calling me that Damon Wayans Jr. doesn't want to do it, but Marlon Wayans I, is into it. I was just going to recommend Marlon. Marlon is Marlon is open to it. What about Keenan Ivory Wayans? Oh, that's a good call. I think Keenan's probably got the big... Low down dirty shame. Yeah. That's Amanda's favorite movie. I swear to God, it's so weird. <laughs> my wife. My wife. My wife. We were talking about movies that she's like her guilty pleasure, the movies that she loves. And she's like, have you ever seen a low down, dirty shame? I'm like, no, I've never seen this movie. It's terrible. I bet. If we turn it on, the guy's name, Keenan Ivory Wayans plays a man named Shame. 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 Yeah. And Jada Pinkett Smith plays like his like side, like his sidekick. Yeah. He's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Aww. And after we rewatched him, and like, I haven't seen this in a few years. It's not really holding up. I said, yeah, I can tell. You know what still holds up? Bad Boys 2. All hey. right. There we go. Uh, not not saying out of their own possibility that a Lethal Weapon 5 crossover with the TV universe couldn't happen on Fox next year. Pitch it to the execs. Yeah. You heard it here first on TV Talk. I like it. Uh, speaking of shows and people that you haven't seen in a minute but always bring you joy. Danny McBride. Oh, my God. With the righteous gemstones. <laughs> I saw this photo, and I 
giggled for oh. for five minutes. Oh my god, this makes me so happy because I know I know that you didn't watch Vice Principals. Uh, no, what are you talking about? Oh, wait, you did watch. Vice I Principals. loved I'm sorry. Vice Principals. Vice Principals was genius. It was brilliant, and they shot the whole thing as one series, so amazing. they knew exactly where it was going. Yes. for the entire eighteen episodes or whatever. It Two was. total episodes. Walton Goggins. Yeah, Danny McBride. Uh, an unwatched show, really. Nope, not that many people it watch it. Did not get a lot of love, but, but it, it was it's, it's so, so good. It's so good. And Danny McBride, in, in my opinion, never gets old. He's pounding down his his shit. But them as televangelists with Adam Devine, yeah, him, uh, this whole world that they're creating. I just know this is going to get absurdly awesome because he comes from the South. Danny McBride's a guy from North Carolina. Yeah, and he does great humor. Huge. He does great humor around Southern characters. Yes, 100%. I always love the way that he portrays the South He because he, he even shoots a lot of his shows at a studio in, in North, North Carolina because Carolina, uh, yep. he went to NC Arts yeah. and, uh, and he's got a lot of roots in that area. Yeah. So yeah, I think Vice Principals actually took place in South Carolina. I think so. Yeah, yeah, but it was shot in North Carolina, right. and uh, yeah, this show looks hysterical. Yeah, John, John Goodman. John Goodman yeah. as the televangelist. Yes, Edie Patterson, who was a standout, a breakout hit actress in Vice Principals mm-hmm. as the crazy, crazy teacher. Girlfriend, yeah, uh, she's playing the sister, and then Divine and. <laughs> McBride are the two sons. Yes. And it just. <laughs> McBride has the gray sideburns. Yeah. Oh my God. It's yeah. so good. They, uh, the, the whole concept sounds fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it says uh, the half hour comedy about a world famous televangelist family with a long tradition of deviance, greed, and charitable work. <laughs> All in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm loving, I'm loving, cons- yes. uh, I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, and. John Goodman's going to sh- start shooting this as soon as Connor's uh, production is complete. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it sounds sounds hilarious. Uh, there, there's some supporting cast that they announced. There's one character, uh, one character played by Tony Cavallero. He's playing Keith Chambers, an ex Satanist who is saved by, <laughs> by Keith. Yeah, K E E F. Yeah, yep. Keith. Keith. And uh, yeah, and then. Um, and there's a and then Gregory Allen Williams is playing a conservative Kenyan and Eli's right hand. <laughs> so, a conservative Kenyan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. just so good. Yeah. So it, it sounds incredible. Yeah, I excited. can't wait to see what ridiculousness they put they put together for yeah, the show. Me too. Uh the Heathers uh limited series finally making it to air. Uh you were talking to me about this earlier. I here's the thing. I didn't I know Heathers is like a famous movie and people yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did not like that movie. I don't know if you were its, were its target audience <laughs> per not. se, yeah. but yeah, I mean it's a cult classic. It's sure. it's uh, there's there's always been a lot of love around that around that movie for many years, mm-hmm. and uh, the limited series I was really looking forward to. It was originally developed at TV Land, and then when Paramount Network was created, mm-hmm. they moved it over. It was going to be one of the flagship shows, but it was set to premiere right after uh, the unfortunate. Uh, school, shooting. school shooting at Marjorie Stone and Douglas. Mm-hmm. So they shelved the show because a lot of the themes are around death and right. guns at school and everything. So they decided it was not a and good it's idea. Like a dark comedy. So yeah, it's a yeah. very dark satirical show. And they they so they've now they ended up canceling the show altogether. They decided they were never going to air it. Yeah. But they've now recut the ten episodes. It was a limited series anthology style. Yeah. So it's a self-contained story. They recut them all, took out some of the more controversial elements mm-hmm. that were causing the show to be shelved in the first place. Smart. And uh, but left a lot of the dark humor. And so they've they're now going to binge them over five nights leading up to like Halloween. I like it. That's a good idea. Sure. I watched a new trailer for it, and it still looks just as dark and twisted and ridiculous yeah. as before. I was telling you, I, I equated it to like a darker. Pay, uh, like cable version of what Scream Queen, Scream Queens season one was trying to do. Got it. Another show that not is not from my target audience. Yeah, but, uh, and, and I liked what they were. I have a love hate relationship with Ryan Murphy. Sure, uh, but I uh, I liked the concept of what they were trying to do mm-hmm. with that show. I didn't like the execution as much, uh, and so uh, this show I was really looking forward to. And I think that I think that I'm going to give the pilot even, a chance. I don't think I have the time to give that's a, fair. A, th- a three episode chance. I got to choose my battles with the three episodes. That's but fair. if I like the pilot, I'll keep watching. That's what I'm going to get for Heather's uh, Wheel of Time. Uh, there's an adaptation at Amazon. I never read any of these books, but I got a couple tweets from people, so I thought I'd, we'd throw it in there. I don't know anything about the Wheel of Time, but it just is it related, sounds. Is it related to the Wheel of Fortune? No, no. 
unfortunately. That, I'm not familiar. Um, it's not related to uh, the spinning wheels, the um, roller skating rink outside Pittsburgh from the era, uh, mid to late 80s. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, not about that. Um, it's not about wheelies either, the shoes that okay. kids wear. It it's, sounds like an old show from the 50s, like, wheel of time, <laughs> time, time. <laughs> it's basically uh, that soap opera. Days of Our Lives. It's basically <laughs> Days of Our Lives meets uh, Game of Thrones is what they're pitching it as. No, I'm, that's totally false too. Uh, it's <laughs> it, it's a it's a fantasy world where the women women have all the magical power. Ah, and so you have to. Uh, Apparently, in order to get or utilize the power, you have to get in with these people. There's witches and yada yada yada. I don't know. Everybody is trying. Originally, I thought this was this was announced a while back, and they keep like bringing it up and bringing it up. I think they're having a lot of trouble getting this thing because it's a series of books. It's like Game of Thrones, but it's not like Game of Thrones. It's a little too kind of out there when they start when it starts being pitched to me i'm like oh no not another one of these things yeah, but yeah, yeah. it is a beloved book series so i'm sure there's there's a fan base there everybody wants their game of thrones everybody does a everybody and it they're going to keep throwing money at the wall until they get it yep yeah i mean Am this Amazon, amazon's already so. got lord of the rings yes they're now they're developing this netflix just announced this week they got all the rights to all the narnia the narnia books yeah they're the first studio in a very long time to have all the rights for every book at once. Yeah. So they're going to produce films, but all, there's also talk about television series of I Narnia just don't, at I just, Netflix. I, I I grew up. They 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 put those movies out. I read The Lion, Witch, and the World Road. Yeah. And I like it. Yeah. Um, I like that movie. I thought it was good. Then it just kept going. Right. And then I got confused. Was the Golden Compass part of no. that? It uh, kind of looked the yeah, same. Yeah. No. They only. I think they only did three. Disney only did three movies. Okay. Uh. At, in the series, and I don't think they even had the rights to two of the book, like the middle books. Okay. So, uh, I remember watching, like, I want to say BBC did like a live. Someone did a live action version of the show okay. uh, back in like the seventies or eighties. I think I had to watch it for Sunday school or something. Right. And <laughs> so I remember, wa I remember watching it all. It was good. Okay. Uh, it was clearly shot on a soundstage kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. That's, I think it was BBC, but yeah. I, I'm blanking. And there was an animated version as well. Okay. Um. It's a it's a wonderful book series. It's a really entertaining world, and I think there's a lot they can do with it. So if Netflix wants to throw the c same kind of money that they're throwing at The Crown or any of their other shows where they're spending $10, $15 million an episode sure. or, or just do them as films, my guess is they're going to do – the big ones as films to kick it off mm -hmm. and then I supplement. Well, I think there's a couple books in the middle that have different characters. Yeah. So I think that they, uh, they they might use, they might, uh, they might use those as off shoots for television shows. Okay. Uh, so they can create a whole, a whole landscape of bingeable product that you can, you can consume in the Chronicles. What? Or the chronic what? Coals of Narnia. Correct. Um, hopefully one of those series is just Andy Samberg, <laughs> Akiva, and Yorma coming up with the concept. I'm in. For Chronicles Sign me up of for Narnia. that. Sign me up for that. Yeah. I, I, uh, anyway, uh, let's move on. Because I, I'm going to say something about the Chronicles of Narnia that is is going to get me like, you, you don't like it? I, I don't. It's okay. But I, it's fine. I've never been a – I'm not a big fantasy person. I love sci-fi. Yeah, I like my I like my operas in space and I, not in middle. In like, yes, I know. Like like random parts of the world uh, on horseback and stuff. Yeah. It's just not my thing. Got it. Uh, but everybody's got their thing, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not I've my got thing. my thing. Everybody's got it. Speaking of things that I like, Brooklyn Nine Nine, great show. Love it. Hilarious. Hysterical. What's it, what's going on with Brooklyn Nine Nine? <laughs> Adjectives. Uh, Chelsea Preddy's leaving Brooklyn Nine Nine. Now listen. I, this is not that big of a deal to me, at least, yeah, because yeah. she really hasn't been in the show that much for the last year and a half. Well, They've she was pregnant, pregnant for a lot of it, and then she, you know she ha had her baby, and then she, they kept bringing her in for like really side, side, side stories. It was like the off, off, off Broadway play of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Gotcha. Uh, I do love the cast, and I, I really like the show, and I'm looking forward to it coming back. But I feel like this is the kind of thing where it it le it got canceled at Fox. "Quote unquote," it got picked up at NBC because it's an NBC Universal show. At, Correct. At, anyway, that it, maybe this is the swan song season that it does. Like the, the fans don't transfer over, and the it's fan possible. base wasn't as big it's anyway. Quite po that's quite possible. So maybe your diehards like you and I are going to watch a, it's it. A, but... It's a mid season. It's a mid season show. Yeah. Uh, eighteen episode order. 
which uh, is a lot yeah, for a, a mid-season it's show. It's a lot for a mid-season show, but they they might air them in one-hour blocks. I was going to say twos, they're twos, gonna, twos. They're going to do one of these. One of those? One of those. Like The Good Place did for the premiere, which yeah. was incredible. I loved it. It was really great. Yes. Unfortunately, the end credits started running too early, and a surprise appearance at the end of the Got second cut episode. cut off from your DVR? No. Oh. I, I saw the actor's name in the credits first before oh, they showed no. up on screen, and Amanda and I both were like, wait, he, that person wasn't in the show. Oh, oh, and then they came in, and it was kind of spoiled for me. Gotcha. Because uh, the the because I, I was reading. I that's that's what I get for reading, Josh. Come on, Dad. I know I should. We've been read. over it. I'm not supposed to read books. Are not for TV watchers. This wasn't even books. This was just words on the screen. I know, but yeah. I told you. I, I'm Your sorry. Your SATs were 20 years ago. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But okay. yeah, Chelsea, thank you for the laughs. Yes. Uh, she was great on the show. She's hilarious. Maybe Jordan Peele will put her in an episode I'd of The Twilight Zone. I'd love to see something like that. Or I'd love to see her and, and him maybe collab on something. Yeah. Because she's a very funny, very funny girl. Very funny uh, comedian. Yeah, I've always, I've always. Stand up's great. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to I, saw, just, I think the first time I saw her was on a roast. Years ago, first time I saw her was at the Improv when well, I you first probably, moved to LA. You probably saw her on stage. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I saw her when she started doing the roast. Her and stuff. delivery is perfect. I've always been a fan, so yeah. um, I was happy that she was on a sitcom, and you know, uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Sabrina, the teenage witch slash Sabrina. I killed people. Uh, this Chilli- is the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Yes. is the title. Okay, my bad the, on that the one. The new, the new Netflix chilled Riverdale monkey spin-off. brains. Sabrina, yeah. Is back. Yeah. Did you watch She's the trailer? Dark. I did. Do you and like I it? I kind of like. I liked it too. Oh, right. I'm not. I. Do you like Riverdale? Uh, I watched the first season of Riverdale. Yeah. And that was enough. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. I watched a couple episodes can, into he, the end of the first season. And here, here's the thing. It's fine. You can watch. It's not my. Fa- not my bag. You can watch the first season of every CW show, mm-hmm. every single one, and enjoy them, but know full well. That the second season will be the exact same, the same thing, the same thing. So watch. So you're saying watch the first season and then tune in for the series finale. Correct. Ten years later. Yes, and you're fine, and you'll get it. It's like the good one when, when they're all wearing wigs to cover up the fact that they've all grown bald spots. Yep. Where their hair used to be. Correct. Yep. Nailed it. But yeah, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. But it's on. It's on Netflix. It's a Netflix show. It looks dark. It does. And twisted. And I like uh, Sally from Mad yeah. Men. Yeah, Kieran Ship- Shipka was always a breakout, yeah. standout performance for well, me. Well, it wasn't Gene. Uh, he was the baby. <laughs> uh, they recast. They recast that kid like six times. There are, I mean, there are more. He was like the soap opera kid. There are more more male young actors that played <laughs> played the young uh, son. The young son. Well, because Gene was the baby. Gene was the baby. Was it what Bobby? Was Bobby. Bobby Draper. Yeah. But yeah, more kids played that actor. Uh, so yeah. I will say this: it is way easier, or at least it appears to be way easier to write for young girls on television <laughs> than young boys. Because if yeah. you, the first couple seasons of Homeland, the sister had a storyline. Yep. The brother just was like, "Dad, I gotta yeah. watch TV and eat pop tarts." Like he didn't have a storyline. Yeah. They never, they never have good storylines. And it's maybe I have two words for you: Where's Henry? <laughs> yeah, where's Henry? You remember the Americans? They couldn't. Like they had to come up with the most outlandish reasons he for Henry hockey. not to be in the show, and then I did finally find out. We were talking about when I went to the um, when I went to the series finale right. thing and listened to the cast and crew talk. Uh, they had to uh, for like two seasons until they did some time jumping. They had to shoot all of his scenes sitting down because he had such a giant growth spurt. He was, he was like taller, Myers. taller than all of the other actors. <laughs> and they're like, this kid is supposed to be 14 and he looks like he's Son 20. Up. So they kept like putting him in front of a computer screen or yeah. like in front of the TV. And yeah. So, and then smart a lot of it. And then and then he started playing hockey. Yeah. And they could just do, use body doubles and stuff. <laughs> But, but yeah, it's a lot harder. I think I think young girls. I mean, they mature more. Yeah, uh, they mature more quickly. And, and they all, but there's always interesting have, things happening with the girls. Yeah, exactly. As and opposed to guys, young young boys, they a lot of them they are very fart, quiet. They, eat, they play they, sports. Yeah, they, there's there's they're not as multi dimensional. Yeah. They so get I think, pimples. They chase after girls. There's nothing interesting. Girls always have something to them, except for exactly. apparently the kids in in the Stranger Things. So. Yeah, well, yeah, The Stranger Things is one of the few shows I think that has written young boys really well, yeah. actually, and, and I a think, young girl very well. And well, yeah, and and it, I would say one young girl That's very the, well. Yeah. The second, the, the second season, the new actress, I didn't really love the way that was written. No, but wasn't the best. Uh, I'm looking forward to season three, yeah. which I did. It was corrected. We got to correct the rec- correct the record. It's not coming out at Halloween. Sabrina is right. Uh, Stranger Things is not coming out until next summer. Okay. 
So no. we were wrong about that. Or and bad. And thank you for everyone that was tweeting at me because now I have one less show that I have to worry about binging before the end of October. October. Yep. Uh, speaking of binging a show, uh, Lodge 49 renewed for season two. I tried to watch the pilot. I couldn't do it. I just kept seeing commercials for it between Better yeah. Call Saul. And I was like, what is this show? Right. They, they, they were advertising it as it's like Lebowski. It's like Big Lebowski is a TV show. So yeah. well, I don't want to watch that. No. It, it, does it star you, the Big Lebowski? <laughs> no. No. Then I'm not watching. Well, here's the thing is. What? Uh, oh, man! Scott here. Mance is in the studio, guys. Okay, we're hearing it. We we have headphones on, yeah. and there's we're the only these are the only mics on in the entire room. Keep the cameras, but on. we can still Keep the hear Scott Mance through our noise canceling headphones. So, oh, Josh just took a spill, guys. Josh just broke. Uh, if anyone's listening to the show or watching it, uh, you can't see right now because it's off camera. But Josh Fuck. just ran into two tables, Damn, and he to do a show. Christ. he. he uh, all right, Josh just yelled at Scott to tell him to shut up. Uh, all right, so moving on, um, there's a podcast called Dr. Death, which Dude. I'm not familiar with. Okay. My wife loves this podcast. Uh, these are broken. Our though. wives love all podcasts. Can, they, can we get cops in here? Does, is this broken? Did I break anything? Did you break something? Can you just not hear it? I, I Did can't it pull out anything. of the thing? I might have. Oh, we're, this is a it mess. It doesn't matter. This is a mess. Anyway. All right. Uh, Dr. Death is awesome. Okay, it's about this surgeon that somehow like passed, like frauded his way into being a surgeon. Because you're supposed to in, okay. in medical school, you're supposed to have like ten thousand surgeries. Basically, it's like your ten thousand hours, right? Sure. Uh, or over time, like you you're in medical school and you're doing like ten surgeries. You're or lose your over. He did like a hundred, and then he gets his own practice in Dallas and he starts killing people. But he's this suave guy and he's and he's conning people out of money and he's conning people and he's and, and no and nobody's really paying attention. Like medical. Boards just keep passing. So him. this is like the real life uh, uh, Doc Hollywood. Correct. Remember that? Remember, what yeah. was that Michael J. Fox movie yeah, where he's like Doc, a scam? He's a, it was a scam doctor. A scam doctor. Yeah, Doc movie. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, it is. It is, dude. It is really, really good. And they're making a show about it. Now, when the people die, does he do? Does he see them as visions? Do they come back? Is this like a crossing, crossing Jordan sort of thing? It's like touched by an angel uh -huh. meets crossing Jordan meets the horse whisperer. Yeah, or the uh, ghost whisperer. The ghost whisperer. The horse. Jennifer Love Hughes. I mean, maybe the horse whisperer too. <laughs> the the horse horses just well. walk through. The... Yep. All right. Uh, no, it's. Did you ever listen? Doctor Death is. Uh, is a, almost like Dear John. Did you ever listen to that podcast, Dear John? I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. Okay. I'm sure these are all true crimes. I'm sure Amanda has listened to all of them. All of them. Both both of our wives love yes. a good old murder podcast. But Doctor Death is very very interesting because somehow this guy just kept doing surgeries and killing people or maiming them or paralyzing them. It's crazy. It's a crazy story. It's it's great. I hope they cast somebody like a Jason Patrick in the role because you need you need like a I guy like that. that's mysterious but also could totally be charming to people. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I really like the fact that they're making this. I, I enjoy some of these podcasts getting made into TV shows. I wasn't a super big fan of lore because I thought it was just like poor. It was weirdly yeah. done. But I like the fact of that they're they're taking these podcasts that are semi mainstream and transitioning them to television because they are already serial. Yeah. No pun intended. Hey. And uh, I love it. I just love it. Yeah. I mean, everyone's looking for existing IP. Yeah. And I think there's some. Amazing stories, long form, long form serialized stories that are happening in the podcast world. Yeah. So uh, you know, hey. maybe this show will become a TV show at some point. Hey, like, TV talk, the TV show. TV talk, the TV show, where you and I host the show, and then at night we <laughs> kill people <laughs> in the hopes that they come back as horses to talk to us. Yes, uh, and we drive around okay. in our in our van. Okay, as members of the Sons of Vanner. I can dig. Uh, I think this this is getting off the rails a little bit. Yes. What, what's this new show, Gangs of London? Gangs of London. Is this like gang the sequel spinoff to Gangs of New York? No, this is sort of like, like um, gangs. So Gangs of London. I I love British stuff. I am aware. Right. Well. I'm, do you not, love not, all the, not, not David Griffin? Not David Griffin. Not like not like masterpiece theater. British. No, 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 no. I like you know Peaky Blinders. Yes. Uh, Broad Church. Yeah. Uh, Happy Valley sure. stuff like that. Gotcha. This is like um, a Sopranos ish, Mister In Between ish kind of a gotcha. thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. But in London, and there's all the, the like a crime lords and crime leaders and all this kind of a stuff. But in London, and I love. We don't have a lot of that over here. So it's like a lock, it's like Lockstock the series kind of thing. Like like that that kind of. Exactly. Exactly. Underbelly ground. Yeah, like a grittier snatch. I like it. Right? I like it. Uh, and 
I, again, we don't just get in, we don't get enough British stuff over here. And there's a lot of people that tweeted us and ask us like, "Why haven't you reviewed all these BBC shows?" Because right. they don't appear over here. There's no marketing. Yeah, they either get buried yeah. on Netflix. Yeah, they get buried in Netflix more often than not. Yeah, or they so, show up at 9 p.m. every other Sunday on PBS, and r- you never see we it. We just don't have it. And the only, I mean, the only foreign show that I watch is Gamora, and it's on <laughs> Sundance, and I haven't seen a new season pop up. Fair so, enough. oh, and this is going to be on Cinemax. Yes. Exactly. Another great station where I've supported their programming for a long time. <laughs> Not just the boob programming, the good programming. The good stuff, too. Banshee. Uh, strike Back. Moving on. Godfathers of Harlan. Godfathers of Harlan. <laughs> I just feel like that needs a theme song. <laughs> That's if, like, it was the Family Matters spinoff in Harlem. It was just like, two guys. Godfathers to their friends' kids. Yeah. The friends die in a tragic accident. Now they're the Godfathers of Harlem. Yeah. Um... Godfather's Giancarlo Harlan was filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> dad, I'm not your dad. <laughs> Sorry, laugh track. Uh, Godfathers of Harlem, which we talked about last week. This is the Forrest Whitaker show. He cast his daughter. Uh, now is added Giancarlo Esposito. Yes. Who Gus has been Fring. awesome this season of, oh of my gosh. Better Call Saul. He is so... Uh, I, I know we go, we go on tangents about this every week, but... Yeah. We, I think we need the season finale is happening on Monday. Yes, I feel like we need to do like a season wrap up, because so we can talk about all the spoilers that we've been trying to dance around all season. Yeah. Because you gotta watch, you gotta be watching Better Call Saul, and Giancarlo Esposito is always incredible. I saw him perform as the Candyman uh, for the uh, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory live with the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra. Yeah, and he was even even entertaining doing that. Yes, and he's not a singer by trade, I don't think. Uh, but he was dancing around. He's just he's a wonderful, wonderful actor. Uh, big fan of his back from his Spike Lee days and his uh, homicide you, life on the street days. Did and, you ever see that show, The Get Down? The Get Down. I know the name. It was the Bo- Boz Lerman show that yeah, took place yeah, in the Bronx. Yeah, the really expensive one that they canned because the music rights were. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't watch it. He played like the the preacher father, and he was actually pretty good. He's playing a preacher in Godfathers of Harlem. I know. That's like why a, it kind of yeah, came. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I the idea of Forrest Whitaker and Giancarlo Esposito going at it on screen mm-hmm. sounds fantastic to me. Yeah. Uh, it's on this show's on Epics, so I guess I need to get Epics. I, I have Epics. Uh, I they, they they have they've had programming on yeah, before that I yeah. watched. I just I'm just I'm just not subscribed yeah. to it. But uh, and a couple last things: Whitney Cummings and Lee Daniels are doing a series. It's that's like, an oh, interesting pairing. I know. And it's Me Too. It's a Me Too themed college comedy series. Mm. Uh, what is the concept? It seems like here? a lot of things. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> she plays like a counselor. She works at the ombudsman's office at a college as they navigate the PC culture and Me Too climate. If it's anything like PCU, I might be able to get on board with this. I, l- I do like PCU. Yeah. PCU is very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, the last big show that she had her name on as a developer was Two Broke Girls. Yeah. Um, well, she had which, Whitney. Well, yeah, she had Whitney, two and then broke she, girls. she created Two Broke Girls, which was much more, much more successful. Right. Uh, she then wasn't she had, in that show. Correct. That's for her. That's her downfall. Yeah. She yeah, puts yeah. herself in things. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like Love You Mean It crashed hard. Right. Um, she's an acquired taste on screen. I think she's got. She's very funny off. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I would agree with that. Uh, and I I don't know if she's supposed to star in the show or not, but it's an interesting pairing. Her and Lee Daniels. Obviously, Lee Daniels is doing tons of stuff with. Uh, with uh, uh, Star yeah. and Empire and all those television yeah. programs, so Lee Daniels the Butler and Lee da- and Lee Daniels the Butler. I've always not been a fan of people that put their name on their things. That was so, fr- up but front. that was from a uh, that was that was from a lawsuit thing. There was another show. Uh, there was another project that had the trademark to the Butler. Gotcha. And they had to put the they had to change the title. Gotcha. So that was why his Lee name Daniels does up. he does do alt things well. I'll just. Leave it at that. Fair enough. You know? Yeah. Uh, finally, Marvel's Runaways got a new trailer. It comes out around Christmas time as well. I like Marvel's Runaways. I watched the whole first season. It's a little hokey, a little gitchy. It's it's, But it's a little less CW than CW. You would think it'd be way okay. to CW, but it you know takes place in Southern California. There's It's a lot less, um, you know, teen angst, drama, dating, everything's a dating thing, and a yeah. little more, because the parents are way more involved, kind of a situation. It ha- it has some grit to it, and I actually kind of enjoyed it. So, uh, I'm looking forward to season two. It's a weird, it's a very weird property of Marvel, because there's a okay. dinosaur involved. <laughs> <laughs> 
Didn't see that coming. Yeah, there's a di- it's a w- it's just a weird property. I don't know where this is going. The whole first season was basically a setup for this second part of the season when they're actual runaways. Gotcha. So uh, this, this trailer for season two, the first one, the teaser trailer looked pretty cool. I'll, All right. I'll give it that. Uh, I just noticed on Collider.com uh, that they've reviewed the newest season of The Man in the High Castle, which apparently drops on Amazon tomorrow. Really? I had no idea. Season three drops tomorrow. What? Yeah, the whole season. Or at least the first two episodes uh, drop tomorrow, October 5th. Okay. Uh, so today, because yes. this show airs on Fridays, okay. and I will remember that eventually. Um, Collider.com gave it five stars. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so I, I know you love Man in the High Castle. I'm a big fan of Man I in the High. I live for it. It's such a good show. It was, Why has there been no marketing? I, I mean, I guess the show in its third season, uh, they put all their money to Jack Ryan. They seem to do that on Amazon. They, they, they push because... I think it's a it's a subscribers yeah. game with them, and so they they want new things, and so like when Bosch comes around every year, yeah. no one ever hears about it. No, I didn't hear about Goliath until it dropped. Yeah, um, which we need to talk about a Goliath season two at some point because yeah. that show gave me a run. I still don't really know how to process season right. two of that show. Um, but Man of the High Castle season three, I love Man. We will High be Castle. watching it soon, and hopefully doing a review of, about it soon. I agree, because uh, I do love that show. Me too. Uh, Again, like the, the the title on Collider.com is Amazon's alt history drama continues to blur the lines between fact and fiction. So true. Yeah, because you can see if this would have happened, it yeah. probably would have looked like this. Yes, I, I, it's a wonderfully mapped out version of what could happen. Yep. I, I I did a. Pit. I remember doing a pitch in film school for a for a project, an alternate history where the South won the uh, the Civil War, okay. and what would happen after that. Not long after that, a, a mockumentary came out that covered the same stuff. But right. this was for like a drama series. This was Man in the High Castle, but okay. But like what modern day America would look like. Sure. Had that changed? I, I love that idea. I mean, and, I love uh, old history so, stuff that yeah, isn't I, a. I, I love the concepts of all, all history. It's scary. Like yeah. you watch the you watch the opening credits of uh, Man in the High Castle, like the, in, in the pilot. Yeah. When you watch the opening credits, if you don't know what the show is going to be, and you start seeing the animations for explaining the world yes. and what the world looks like at that time. It's uh, frightening. It's, it's it's a frightening it's a frightening reality. It sure is. Uh, you got you got any, you got any questions let's, from the fans? Let's do some Twitter questions. Hashtag, Hashtag Collider TV Talk. Correct. Uh, it's you know we've, we've I have some ones from last week that I screenshotted and I saved. Okay. Uh, what classic show that has had a revival uh, that hasn't had a revival or remake yet would you like to see? Hashtag Collider TV. This comes from Justin Gilmore at J Gilioda nine hundred. Hmm. I mean, I am a big fan. It's hard. I think a lot of the reboots are coming like with the casts attached. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing like a fresh take of a show here okay. and there. Like, like, I mean, like a show like the Bob Newhart show. Okay, it was a simple concept where he was a he was a he was a therapist and yeah. he worked in a group therapy session. Yeah, like I wouldn't mind a fresh version of that. Yeah, like as a sitcom, you bring in a bunch of comedians. It's well, not it's a sort new of like idea. Louder Milk, but that's more for yeah. like it's more of a rehab kind of a situation. Sure, but sure. Yeah, I like that idea. I, I there's something about the the situational comedy that doesn't. I would like to see it. It doesn't have to be. It can be multicam. Yeah. yeah. I want to see something that's a little more re- reality looking without the laugh track. I see. Are you talking visually? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I not as that. like lit. I hear. Yeah. 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 Do you it's know what I'm saying? Ha- it's ha- yeah. It's hard from a from a production, production. standpoint. Sure. The one thing that. Uh, I was thinking about this after we had our conversation last week about multicam shows, but like when you look at a show like How I Met Your Mother, yeah, that was a show that was a hybrid show. They shot it and lit it like a multicam show, but then they shot a lot of stuff single camera. Yes, and I think they did a really that's good, like Seinfeld too. They did a really good job, I thought, on that program. In fact, the the DP who I know uh, <laughs> designed his, I, I built his website. That's I think. cool. Uh, he won he won multiple Emmys for lighting and shooting that show because it was such a monumental task to take a traditional multicam set and then try to like shoot it for single cam and multicam at the same time Mm -hmm. and try not to make the lighting too harsh while still having that kind of traditional vibe. Cause you need a light. If you're shooting multicam, you need to light everything all at once so that all the kit, cause it doesn't matter where the cameras are pointing. It needs to be ready. And so it just by default, Starts looking a little flat, little soap opery, that kind of thing. Right. Um, unfortunately, there hasn't been 
I think The Office did a really good job. It was a single cam show, but as we all know. Set. But they shot it. They shot it in a, in an old office, yeah. like warehouse. And they, I remember reading. I read an article about it. They uh, when it was on, they basically put a bunch of lights and they hid them all uh, behind the ceiling tiles of the office, mm. so that if they were shooting in that direction and you, and you saw the ceiling, then they would just like cover them up. Mm. But then if they had to pop over to shoot there, they would just open the ceiling tile and drop the light down and it would already be ready to go. Genius. That's how they were able to shoot so free so we much. Need more of that. And I think that that was a that was a show where like it felt really real. Yeah. And it felt like they were in that space the whole time because they were because right. it was a real office building and but they rigged it ahead of time in a way that they could go run and gun as quickly as possible. I agree. Um, so I yeah, I would love maybe 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 a multicam show needs to be shot outdoors. Maybe we need to we need to get like a like an outdoor setting, multicam show so it's natural light, and it looks a li like like it's set like say it's set at a summer camp and we yeah. shoot and we build the set outdoors, uh in 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 the in in a summer camp set sure and you know it's Los Angeles nine times out of ten it's gonna be okay. I always wanted to do an outdoor, multicam golf course show. There you go. That's I'm down. Again, yeah. I'm down. Uh, that just, was not an answer to your question, but uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. What do you know? Uh, at J Pereira Art. I hope I'm saying his last name Pereira. Uh, which like Kevin Pereira from Attack of the Show? Correct. Yeah. Not him. Not him though. Different spelling. Kevin, if this you're listening, like send Pereira, us a tweet. But I, um, I think it's Pereira. All right. Uh, which they solved it procedural <laughs> would be better as a serialized cable show. Ooh. I'm. I, I don't know anything about any procedural because I never really watched I know, it. I know, I know. But okay. I think miniseries. Yeah. Like if we want a, like a serialized cable thing, I'd love to see a, a serialized miniseries for like a CSI or a yeah. – because they have like a crime that shouldn't be able to be solved in one episode. It would be kind of cool to expand that over six. Yeah, yeah. I think that could work. Uh, I, think, I think I remember in the 90s Law & Order did like a few like TV movies mm -hmm. uh, where they expanded – like the story for for a couple episodes, yep. I wouldn't mind seeing like if you could get those characters because some of those some of the characters on the on the they solved it shows are very rich. I agree. You just don't get a lot of them yeah. because of the format of the show, and the format has to be very rigid. So yeah, I mean if, if you if you could take an SVU and they do like a like a, a three night event or something or a six episode thing. They've started to do those crossovers yeah. with all the Chicago shows and it takes Med, them PD takes them fire. Like the whole week and they have to like go to the hot first they have to go to the fire station and then they have well, to go to like, the hospital. It's the DC crossover. It's yeah, like we go to Arrow, the same then we go to Flash and we go it's to the same thing. Yes. It's the same agreed. thing. Uh but yeah, I I think any of those shows uh I'm trying to think of one that was specifically NCIS Criminal Minds? Yeah, NCIS could do it. And Criminal Minds actually would be a really good one. I used to I, I used to watch Criminal Minds a lot yeah. in the first few seasons. Okay. Uh and that show for a while was doing a really good job of delving into the criminal psyche mm -hmm. and the toll that it takes on the 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 investigators. Yeah. And I think that those characters are rich enough that they could do a six a six episode show. Right. Like on a on a Netflix kind okay. of thing. All right. Uh this question comes from at Disney Marvel fan. Uh, Jedi DMF. What <laughs> TV show would you put the wild berries in? Easy. Wild bears. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Lethal weapon. Just make oh! us. Just make us the buddy cop. I love it. Yeah. I'm. I am. I'm DVRing that show immediately. Yeah. I want to. We're not that cops. On his head. What if? Yeah. I mean. He's, but they just gave us guns. I'd put you on the. I'd put you on the good doctor. Ah. And just make you make you deal with the good doctor. Okay. See 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 how that goes. Like like. Hey kid. Like your you would play the uh, you would play the head of the hospital. Okay. And then Elliot would be like the attending nurse. Oh, male nurse. Greg, yeah. He's so a male nurse. so Elliot Elliot would have to help the good doctor fix whatever maladies were happening. And um, then if something went wrong in the operating room, then you would come in and be like, you didn't do a good job. Yeah. You're supposed to be a good doctor. You did a bad thing. <laughs> You're a bad doctor. <laughs> that would be your job. And that's okay. what I'd like to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. It. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, this next question comes from at Bryce Wong. Hashtag a clatter TV talk is cheers. 
Yes. One of the top five greatest comedy sitcoms ever made. I, I would maybe say top three, okay. even. Okay. I, I think Cheers is a perfect show. Yeah. Every season, without fault, the coach years, the post-coach years, mm-hmm. uh, the Sam and Diane, the Kirstie Alley seasons, mm-hmm. every single arc on that show, those characters were so perfectly written for for comedic value. Another three cam that doesn't look like a three it cam. It doesn't look like a three cam, and uh, reminds me... Another one that doesn't look like a three cam was Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, like those those shows they 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 were a little dimmer. Murphy Brown too. Murphy Brown too, to a certain yeah. degree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I still haven't watched the. I haven't watched I, it either. We need to we need to watch okay. that. I, I, I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna put Cheers in my top five okay. for sure. Yeah, and it might be like four. Okay. Because I've got Seinfeld and Friends. Those are my favorites. Oh, I think Cheers is better than Friends. Personally. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, man, that if. <laughs> I haven't ranked them in a while. Yeah. I haven't ranked them in a while, but I think I think Cheer because I've rewatched. I've gone I back and go, rewatched a lot of Cheers. I would go Seinfeld, it's... Friends, The Office, Cheers, Parks and Rec for me. Ooh, I think uh, as far as situational comedies, situational basically. comedies. Yeah, I, I, it's hard for me because I, because I, I still actually have there's in the top five. There's in top uh, top in the top ten. There's still three old sitcoms, I Love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke, and The Andy Griffith Show okay. are still in there for me okay. because they were pretty much perfect yeah. for most of, if not all, of their runs. For their time, too. For their time. But but I, I will still turn on any okay. of those shows. If they're on TV, I will still turn them on and still laugh my proverbial ass off yeah. uh, because their humor was somehow transcendent and universal. I don't know if they realized it at the time. Like, The Honeymooners... Was is not it does not work now because their whole humor was based around spousal Shut abuse. Shut up, you old bag. <laughs> their whole humor was based around spousal abuse. Yeah. And and uh, but there's something about those three shows that still works for me. Yeah. The original like workplace comedies and in Dick Van Dyke and like the the crazy kooky neighborhood comedy of Andy Griffith and then yeah. just like the classic sitcom of I Love Lucy. Right. Uh, but yeah, Cheers is definitely up there. Okay. Seinfeld is definitely up there. Friends is up there. I just think that Cheers is actually a little bit better. Okay. But to answer your question, yes, top five for sure. Yeah. And if you haven't watched, like that's a show that you can go back now and watch, oh. and it still holds up. Still the best. And then Frasier comes along, and yeah. Frasier is incredible. Yeah. It, uh, Frasier's in my top ten. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say Frasier's definitely not better than Cheers. Yeah. by any men by any means, but Frasier for a spinoff show of they they created a whole new world for him. Yeah, and had changed all of his can like they they retconned everything about his character for the yeah. most part. But uh, they they basically just wanted to show with Kelsey Grammer. But they figured out how to make a whole new show that worked on its own. Yep. Okay. Uh, this one comes from at carping about <laughs> Jason C. The Sopranos 18 month, uh, 18 month hiatus, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yep, yep, uh, yep. And people are excited for Daredevil after three years. What are your thoughts on long hiatuses between seasons? Uh, I, I understand if it, if it, if the, if the hiatus is justified yeah. and we get an amazing season of television right. after that hiatus, I'm totally fine with it. Um, uh, I, I don't hate it. I don't love it because yeah. I, I'd love to have my shows when they make it. But if it means producing the best quality right. product, I get the hiatus. Yeah, I, un- I understand the hiatus. I mean, we, we we experienced them a lot 10 years ago when there was a writer strike and a lot of shows went on yeah. a forced hiatus for like 18 months. Yeah. And some shows came back and they were just as good as before and others came back and they just didn't like have that lost. same magic. Yeah. Lost lost definitely suffered a little bit. Mm-hmm. Battlestar suffered, yeah. suffered a little bit. Uh some of those serialized shows, it was hard to get back on the horse. Yeah. Uh, 24 actually worked to a certain degree, mm-hmm. uh, but it was definitely felt different because people moved around and changed. Uh, some of the sitcoms had a hard time coming back. But I think the if it makes sense for the story, I mean, Daredevil is an interesting case because we've had a lot of it. Yeah. It's like it's not like we haven't seen Daredevil. Like after season two, we had the, the Defenders. Right. And then we had the Punisher. And it was yeah. like those. He obviously wasn't in the Punisher, but shared universe. Sh- it's the shared universe. And there it felt and like Punisher was great. It felt like there it didn't feel like there were that many gaps in the story. If, sure. if it was a standalone project. Yep. Like if Daredevil was the only Marvel show that out there. I don't know if it could work with the two and a half year break, but okay. we saw him a little bit in Defenders. 
we have been hearing about him on all the other shows. And the trailers so have been great. So. The new trailer that just dropped this morning yeah. uh, hints that there's another villain, ah. which I don't really like. <laughs> yeah. But they they reference, it sounds like Fisk is pulling all the strings, so I think Fisk is still the big bad of yeah. season three. I just, I, I don't want it to fall in the same traps that season two did where they tried to cover too much ground. Too much. And so I'm Same looking, as Luke Cage of season one. Exactly. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but yeah. I'm still... It, it gave me, like, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, All right. But. Well, that's it. Those are the Twitter questions. That's a TV talk. Thad, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me online at Thad Williams, or you can yell at me about the Schmodown pretty much anywhere. <laughs> uh, and we kept time on this one. I yeah. think. Oh, we're we're Close we're at an hour ten, but that was including you breaking four things in the office. Yeah, that's my bad. And you talking to your contractor. Oh, oh we yeah. took that out. Yeah, we yeah, edit that we, we, we're gonna edit that part out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm at Josh McCuga, Josh McCuga Twitter, Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel here. Rate it five stars. Tell everybody you know. Uh, we've got some bonus content coming out. There's a review of Titans up with uh, Perry and uh, Man Vinny Mancuso. Uh, a lot of other stuff. If you guys want us to do other stuff? We're, we're still trying to get through Maniac. I really don't know if I like that show, but I, I watched I'm, the pilot and it threw my head for a loop. And yeah. I, I need to sit down again and like. Focus I, I need on to the focus rest to watch focus that show. The, and I cops are yelling at me every day. Have I've you had, watched it? Have you yeah. watched it? Have you watched it? I still haven't had time to focus on it. And there are people asking us about Maniac, and we'll get to it. I know I haven't done a pick of the week on the new show. I don't know if that's going to survive. Maybe I'll do it sometime down the line. Uh, we've just done – there's so much TV out there, and I feel like I've picked it all. Uh, so um, <laughs> maybe maybe some of this new stuff I'll give you a pick of the week. Uh, other than that, we'll see you guys next time on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote.